There are actually four known original versions of Edvard Munch's iconic work Skrieg, better known as The Scream, arguably one of the most symbolic and famous paintings in art history. One version is presently in the private hands of American financier Leon Black. The other three are owned by the city of Oslo, after Munch bequeathed his life's work to his native country after his death in 1944. Until recently, the 1893 version, and most recognisable, was on permanent display at the delightful National Gallery of Norway in Oslo. But in January 2019, this closed, in preparation for a much larger national museum, being built behind Oslo's Nobel Peace Centre, and planned to open in 2020. Visiting the site in June 2019, however, Mr Screamy seems a little anxious that it might not be finished on time. A quick trip on Oslo's very efficient metro network to the area of Toyen, just east of the city centre, brings one to Norway's dedicated Munch Museum, responsible for the other two screen versions, but are not always on public display here. At least one version is lent to other museums around the world. For example, the 1895 lithograph stone print version is spending the summer of 2019 at the British Museum in London, proving to be quite a popular attraction there. The 1910 version appears to be spending one last summer in its home in Oslo, before this location too closes and moves to much larger and more imposing premises being built close to the city's opera house. It's the huge, dark, dank building leering over the opera house like a claw, said a local official when I asked her which building was going to be the museum. Like Mr Screamy here, I guess the new building's design is not to everyone's taste. Of course, Munch's work was more than just the scream. The artist's life, influences and legacy can be found all around Oslo even today. City Hall has a so-called Munk Room showcasing pieces by the artist. Eleven huge oil paintings, including the sun here, can be found inside the University of Oslo's Aula, commissioned especially for the hall, and twelve smaller pieces echoing Munk's Freeze of Life series were commissioned and still hang in the canteen of Oslo's famous Freya Chocolate Factory. Anyone enjoying a leisurely, if overpriced, drink at Bar Bowman at the Hotel Continental can further enjoy a handful of Munch's work hanging in the lounge. Munch himself preferred to frequent the famous Engibret Café, a favourite with the so-called Christiania Bohemians. A letter by Munch cancelling his membership from the Oslo Artists Association in remorse after a long night with his chums at the café hangs inside the entrance. Oslo's equally famous Grand Café was another of Munch's haunts. It is said that during less lucrative times, Munch offered the café a version of the now famous work The Sick Child in exchange for 100 stakes. The café said no. Carl Johann's Gate, where the café is found, played further significant roles in Munch's life and work. Not only did he feature this street in several of his paintings, he also rented the attic of this building along it in the winter of 1882 that became his first art studio. Within a square kilometre of Carl Johann's Gate are the addresses of Munch's childhood homes. When he was just five years old, Munch's mother Laura passed away with TB at this address. The first of two devastating family events that greatly affected Monk as a child and later his work. The second tragedy was at the age of 13, when his beloved older sister Sophie died, also from TB, at this address. These experiences of personal loss have been attributed particularly to his groundbreaking work The Sick Child, of which the first versions were created here at the last address he shared with his family. In 1889, Munch left Oslo, later calling it the Enemy City, in response to his earlier personal conflicts and tragedies. After several years living, working and finding his success abroad, Munch returned permanently to Norway in 1916, 
and purchased an estate on the outskirts of Oslo called Ekeli. Today the villa he built and lived in there no longer exists, and the area is a little more built up than it was in Munch's time. But his stunning studio still remains, where he worked prolifically right into his 70s. Today it is not only a place for admirers of his work to come and find inspiration in, but it's also used as a place for up-and-coming artists to exhibit their work that may themselves become celebrated pieces of the future. In 1944, Munger died at Eccle at the age of 80 from pneumonia and is buried in the honorary section of Oslo Cemetery of Our Saviour, close to his dear friend Henrik Ibsen and only a short walk from his childhood homes. Solitary as in life, his grave appears at a comfortable distance from everyone else, and one also couldn't help but notice the irony of the viola at the foot of his grave, resembling anxious and maybe even screaming faces. Just a stone's throw away from the graveyard is the old Akir church. Dating back to the 12th century, this beautiful and surprisingly well-preserved church for its age is the oldest remaining building in Oslo. It is lined by the picturesque wooden houses along Tel Tuspuken that only date back to the 18th century. Monk often painted the church and street as a young man, and the area was not quite as overgrown and built up, and when the weather was a bit more agreeable. In January 1892, Monk said, I was walking along the road with two friends. The sun was setting. Suddenly, the sky turned blood red. I paused, feeling exhausted, and leaned on the fence. There was blood and tongues of fire above the blue-black field and the city. My friends walked on and I stood there trembling with anxiety and I sensed an infinite scream passing through nature. This is the very road Monk was inspired to create his most famous piece of work. Just a short bus ride into the hills from the city centre, sightseekers come to see and hopefully enjoy the view that inspired four seminal pieces of art, of which two will be held in the building that now, over a century later, coincidentally appears right in the centre of that very landscape. Bye, Mr. Screamy. 